반갑습니다, 여러분. Hi, my name is Sarah Kim. I'm international student at Glendale College. Now you're watching Gateways to Glendale College. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, again, today is uh, African music, and I'll be introducing Mr. Derek Spiver here in a little bit. He'll be talking about West African music in particular. But I wanted to start today by running through a little bit of a PowerPoint at the beginning, just give you some idea uh, before we launch into it, what some of the kind of major aspects of this music are, some of the important ideas. So let's take a look at these. So Sub-Saharan Africa maintains enormous linguistic, cultural, and musical diversity where oral traditions are the means of passing down culture rather than literary traditions. So it's not music that you're going to see written down a lot. You learn it by sitting at somebody's knee and playing the music over and over and over again until it sticks. And you learn it not in an etude kind of way, but in kind of mock performance way. You play through performances over and over again until you remember exactly the way it works. Today we're going to approach music of Africa from an anthropological perspective. Uh, this being an ethnomusicology class, it means that it's not just about the music and listening to the music and understanding how the music works, but understanding where music comes from, correct? So we want some idea of what is the culture of Africa. Now, it's a huge place, right? Uh, I did run into a young lady a couple of years ago at a coffee shop. I asked her for some, uh, add some of this African coffee, and I asked her what country it was from, and she said, well, duh, Africa, right? None of us believe that, right? Africa is a continent. It is not a country. There are many diverse cultures in Africa, and we're going to talk about three of those today. So, music is human organized sound, as we talked about in the beginning of the class, and therefore moves with its creators. The music of Africa has spread by exploration, conquest, migrations, and enslavements. Musically, Africa spills over its geographical borders. People from Africa have shaped world history. Here's a map of the slave routes. And you can see, down in South America, quite a few. Down there, what was going on? What were they looking for uh, when the Spanish and the Portuguese were in South, uh, South America and Central America? What were they after? What did they originally gone for? I know the camera's on, but you can talk and answer questions as well as usual. All right. what, what were they looking for when they went to South Africa? Yes, over here. They used the natives who were there as slaves. There weren't enough of them because most of them died, right? So that's why they were bringing Africans over uh, to, to continue the work. All right, so originally they went looking for spice. They didn't find spice. They were looking for India, right? So what did they find? They found gold, right? So they brought a lot of gold over and silver, actually more silver than gold. And they found sugar cane, right? Sugar was hugely expensive. So this was a great place to grow sugar cane and be able to pull that over. And it takes a lot of manpower to create sugar cane, right? So that's what a lot of that was for. And that's coming up into America then a bit later, south, right? And the British colonies as well, there were slaves. George Washington had slaves, right? Just so we're really clear about our own history, yes? Okay, African musical influence. African-influenced music now circles the globe from Havana and London to Harlem and Los Angeles. The musical way of life and the music of these amazing people influences us every day. African culture is directly responsible for rock and roll, jazz, hip hop, work songs, and many other genres. Almost any kind of pop music you can think about and you can name today is African sourced. Right. Rhythm of life. African music often happens in social situations where people's primary goals are not only artistic. Instead, music is for ceremonies, work, or play. Music making contributes to an event's success by focusing attention, communicating information, encouraging social solidarity, and transforming consciousness. Let's look at a few of those things here. Focusing attention. The drums get going. You all know it's time to focus in that area, right? Okay. Uh, communicating information. Right? Uh, maybe there is that uh, kind of drum called the talking drum where, it's, where it is actually a language. Sometimes it's a piece that's about some historical event and we're passing on that historical event. Um, encouraging social sol solidarity. Everybody's dancing together, everyone's playing music together. It helps the community to bond instead of all going home and watching TV by ourselves every night. Right? We all get together and we play music together. Transforming consciousness. 
So often these uh, musical events are about returning ancestors, about channeling ancestors through yourself, right? Maybe there's a piece that you play that you know an ancestor particularly enjoyed. So by playing that piece, the ancestor can come closer to you and allows uh, a possession to happen. So then that ancestor can show up and maybe help you solve a problem in your life. Maybe there's a question you had the, from your, for your grandmother. Can you help me with this life problem? Well, you can channel your grandmother back and she can help you solve that in today's, uh, today's life. Everyone participates, right? just like this class. Everybody participates, there's no hiding in the back. Questions are asked by everyone. Uh, music welcomes social engagement. Others can participate by adding a new phrase to a polyrhythm, singing, or dancing. It's not an intrusion as it would be at a sit-down concert in a European sense. In fact, it would be expected. So if you went to hear the LA Phil, and they're playing a great piece, and it's, maybe it's even a dance piece, and you get up in the aisle, and you start dancing and clapping and having a lot of fun up there, what's going to happen? The usher's going to come down and say, excuse me, ma'am. Pardon me, sir, but we're going to have to ask you to leave. Right? It's not appropriate in the concert hall. In fact, I was sitting behind a gentleman one time who was sketching the conductor, and his pencil was going and somebody turned around and said, shh, right? way too much noise. You're interfering with my experience. Right? So we have this European sense of here's, here are the musicians. There's a stage. There's a lot of light on them. There's a big fall off to keep us away, right? to keep them up there. And then you have this audience back here. And we sit very quietly. And we listen to the music and enjoy what happens. And that's it. Right? And you clap at the end and say, oh, we, we like that. It was lovely. Definitely not the African way of looking at music. All right. So if we're looking at some key concepts here, despite the diversity of Africa that we were just talking about a minute ago, again, it's a huge place, many different cultures. There are a few things about the music that are fairly universal. Interlocking, it's the practice of fitting pitches into space between other parts, alternating pitches or phrases of one part with those of another to create a whole part. An example is the whole melody created by a Mbira player's two hands. Have you all listened to the Mbira? recording we had. If not, we'll listen to some more today. But you got those two hands going bing, 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 and up, down, up, down, and filling it in between the two hands. And we're going to do a lot of that kind of work with the drums today. Finding ways to make a big, complex rhythm that's made up of many, many different parts okay? that create that whole. Call and response is the alteration of interlocking of leader and chorus, or of a vocal and instrumental part. Hockett is the interlocking of pitches between the two or more sound sources to create a single melody or part. So Hockett is that interlocking, right? And call and response is the leader says something, every responds, right? So the James Brown, the hey oh, and you all say it back, right? You're all Americans, so you all sat there quietly, all right? So if I sing something, if I say hey oh, hey, wimpy, hey oh, hey, -o. more, hey oh. There you go, okay. So that call and response is expected. And they, nobody would think about it, say, oh, I have to ask you to do it. They would just do it, right? Because that's the way music works. All right, dense overlapping textures and buzzy timbres. Again, the dense overlapping textures. That's back to talking about the interlocking and the hocketing. That's all part and parcel, the same thing. Buzzy timbres, that's an interesting concept. They, they don't necessarily like these kind of pure sounds that we like. It's like when you play guitar and you want to you put it through a processor so you get some crunch in the sound. They'll take bottle caps on some of these instruments and they'll nail them onto the instrument or add something to it that rattles. So instead of getting just a pure sound, you get a bzzz, bzzz, bzzz along with that sound. Right? So an important component of that sound, not just that pure, that pure kind of boxy sound that we tend to like as, as Americans, especially in classical music, violin player. So when you're playing, you're going for a big, very pure sound, yes? Imagine if you took your Stradivarius and you nailed some bottle caps to it, right? Well, you say, well, I'm not doing that to my instrument, but that would be a sound that they would appreciate. If you have a crack in your violin, if one of the seams comes apart and you get a buzz, right? That's, they enjoy that sound, they would leave the crack instead of fixing it. Cyclical and open-ended forms. So there's a lot of repetition that happens. The same as when we were talking last week about American Indian music, right? There's a lot of repetition. You're doing a lot of the same things over again with some very subtle variations. Now in here, often this, the variations are not that subtle, but there'll be some part of it that repeats over and over and over again. Anybody know what that is called? If you have one thing in the music that you hear over and over and over again. Ostinato, Ostinato great. Somebody's read the text, thank you. So 
it rolls through, right? And you hear it again and again. And there's a lot of examples of that in Western music as well. We were listening to an ABBA tune a little earlier that I won't play for you at the moment, but take a chance on me. Take a chance, take a chance, take a chance on me. Take a chance, take a chance, take a chance on me. I know ABBA's a little old for you guys, but ABBA nonetheless, there's a lot of that going on in that particular piece. We'll look at that a little later in class. And community participation, right. So we've covered this a couple of times already in, these, in this kind of opening. But what I want you to really remember is that music in Africa is never or rarely something that you just sit and you listen to. You always participate. It's just part of the culture. Rhythm and singing is a part of everything they do, whether it's cleaning their clothes, whether it's walking down the street, making bread, it's canceling stamps, right? We heard that, that early on in the class, the canceling of the stamps. Um, making drums, making uh, any kind of a metal thing where they're in the blacksmith shop and the hammers are flying. And so they're not always thinking of that as music. They don't say, oh, while we're doing this work making bread, we're gonna make some music. They're not thinking that. They're thinking this is part of life. This is part of what we do always, is make music and make rhythm and, and it helps us with our work, helps us with our life. It's part of my existence, right? As opposed to the way we kind of think about music issues with, well, now I'm done with my work. Now I can sit down and I can listen to some music or I can go to a concert, right? All participatory, everybody's a musician, right? As you will be today. And the very last thing is again, one more aspect of, of those dense overlapping rhythms and the complexity of this music, all right? Rhythmic complexity, this can occur on many levels, juxtapositions of duples and triples patterns, hemiolas, hemiola, ba 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 ya ba 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 Right, those two take the same amount of time. One I'm dividing into two, one I'm dividing into three. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. A simple one that we use, and it's gonna get a lot more complex than that in a couple minutes here, okay? And with that, we're gonna turn it over to Mr. Derek Spiva, come out, Derek. I'll introduce him. This is my good friend, Derek Spiva. We, uh, we both went to CalArts. We did. Where uh, you have to learn uh, world music along with your Western music. Uh, I did uh, gamelan and Indian music. Uh, when I went to take my audition at USC, uh, I had come right out of CalArts and they said, can you please uh, solfege this, this music for me? And that means that it's a European way of singing. The do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, da, do. And I sat down to do it. And I, uh, can I sing that in Indian sargam for you? And, and they looked at me like I was insane. And they said, no. So, <laughs> so I went back and had to start over again on, on that, but nonetheless. Um, so Derek is also uh, uh, assistant conductor for my youth orchestra up there and uh, works a lot in Los Angeles as a, as a composer as well. I've done a number of his pieces with, with my ensembles. Great composer, great trombone player, uh, great African drum teacher. So we will turn it over to him. <laughs> Let him go to work. All right, so the music that, uh, that I study from West Africa actually comes from a country in, in West Africa called Ghana. Uh, so, and the specific region that, that uh, within Ghana that I study music from is called the Volta region. And then there's also a specific village uh, in which the family that I study the music with comes from, and that's called Anyako, and it's a fishing village in the southeastern part of the Volta region, which is in the eastern part of Ghana, which is in the western part <laughs> of Africa. So um, I say all of those different layers because it's important for people to understand that even when you have one single country in Africa, which is a huge continent with a multitude of countries, even just one country is going to have several layers of, of languages, um, different music, cultural practices, and, uh, and of course, music styles. And um, each one of those, e there's each, each tribe or each language, or each culture is gonna have a completely, uh, in, in some cases, a completely different way of playing music, of making drums. Um, in fact, these specific drums come from the Volta region, but then there's other drums in the northern part of Ghana. Uh, there's one that I didn't bring today, but it's actually on that poster outside. It's actually a, a round drum that hangs on your shoulder that you play with a curved stick. And that drum actually is from the northern part of Ghana, and those drums are completely different. They also use the talking drum, which is uh, called the lunga, 
uh, in that region. And that drum actually has specific language to it. So if you go out there and uh, you're walking with somebody, somebody who plays lunga and is a, a specialist in the instrument, and if a little kid comes up and he's got a lunga and he plays some rhythm, the specialist might ask the, the, the child, oh, so tell me what you played. And then if the kid can say what the story was, what the words were that he played on the drum, then he would like give him a, a quarter or a dollar or something. But if he didn't know, he'd be like, oh, go home and ask your father. And then the kid will run off and, and go ask his parents. But uh, it's very much based on linguistics. In fact, all of the music that you guys will learn today is also based on linguistics. <clears throat> and a reiteration of uh, what uh, Dr. Sherman said on the uh, lecture is that a lot of it is based on conversation. Uh, that's one of the first methods of communication that human beings kind of came up with is how can we communicate with each other and that practice actually is within a lot of the music is that practice of communicating with one person or another and then communicating in groups um, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this before but uh, sometimes when you're in a large room and everybody's talking and then all of a sudden it's quiet and everyone's like whoa what happened there and then there's just like this synchronizing moment. Well, within this music, those synchronizing moments happen more often because the patterns, the, the cycle is a lot shorter than kind of a room of, of uh, uh, several people talking. But, uh, but still the same concept nonetheless. We have conversations going on between many different instruments. They all fit within one specific cycle. And out of that, you get Several different, uh, several different convers conversations happening at once, and then this kind of beautiful overarching picture of all of the combinations together. So uh, what we're going to do is actually we're going to test out the concepts of, uh, of the uh, conversation with you guys. So we're going to split the room in half. You'll take this side of the room, and then I'll take this side of the room. So one of the most basic ways to understand the method of call and response, which is also the method of hemiolas and ostinatos, pancaked like a sandwich all at once, is to do a simple clapping rhythm in which half of the room is doing three and the other half is doing two. Okay? Or if you multiply both of them, it's uh, four against six. Okay? So, this side will do the six or the three, okay? So we're gonna go like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. Good. Okay, awesome. So this side of the room, obviously Dr. Sherman jumped in a little early and that's all good. We're gonna get it going, all right. So. Uh, on this side of the room, you guys are actually going to be doing two. So if they're going one, two, three, one, two, three, you guys are going to be going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. All right, good. So the trick is not to speed up, okay? So we're going to do this, and at the same time that I want everybody to focus on what they're playing, I also want you to focus on what's happening together with them, with this side of the room and this side of the room together. The combination of both sides and what it sounds like as one particular rhythm, okay? So let me just start this side first and then we'll go to that side. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You hear it? Tap together, 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 tap. All right, awesome. Okay, cool. So now I'm just going to have me and Dr. Sherman do it just so that you can hear the combination really clear and Chris. So you can hear 
right? That's the combination of both of them put together, right? Okay, so these patterns actually play off of that basic concept. That concept of some people being in three or six and the concept of other people being in two or four, okay? So let's pass out some of these drums. Play on. There you go. You're welcome. Okay, so let me uh, let me show everybody how to play these things. The the best sound that you're gonna get off of these drums is to make sure that the back of the drum doesn't have anything touching it. So once something is actually touching uh, the plastic head, you get kind of a dead sound. But if you hold it or you can like sit it on your desk like this, and then just, if you're only holding the, the, the fiberglass, the, the wood part with your hand, then it has a ring to it. But you're gonna know that something's wrong if, if your hand's there or if it's like lying fat on your desk. <laughs> so just nice and open like this, okay? Okay, all right. So who did I take this from? All right, cool, it's an extra one. Okay, cool, uh, and then for this side, it's the same concept. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you're not touching the thin plastic or else it'll just, it'll just sound really kind of short and muted. Okay, so you just wanna do that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach both sides two different specific patterns. This one is actually going to uh, illuminate the actual call and response of some of these instruments down here. So here you guys are gonna go like this. You're gonna have two different strokes. One is an open stroke where you just let it ring and the other is closed where you just press it down. Okay so just let's try the open. Try it. And then let's try the close where you press it down. Good. Okay so your rhythm, and it doesn't have to be perfect uh, as far as the, uh, whether it's open or closed, but your rhythm is gonna go like this. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, go ahead and try that. Awesome, okay, go ahead and stop. Okay, so, and then your guys', uh, the smaller drums, your job is gonna be to go like this. And if you can't do the, the small ones, if you can't do the small ones, just do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, Four, five, six. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to start them first because your guys' pattern is a little bit harder than theirs. So I'm going to start them first and then I'm going to play your pattern, okay? And I'll do all this on one of the drums. Okay. All right. So for you guys, here we go. One, two, three, four. So. Okay, keep going. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so do you hear the conversation? Did you guys hear the conversation between the two sides? Awesome. It's fun. <laughs> All right, cool. So I don't want to pass those in just yet because people can still play those drums with these drums when we play these drums, okay? So now what, I'm gonna, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you the piece that these rhythms come from, how they're actually traditionally played on the instruments from that region, okay? This instrument here is called a sogo. These are all both sogos, but they come from two different drum makers, and each drum maker likes to kind of put their own signature design on their specific drum. Just like here, we have trademarks where, you know, certain things, it says Nike or it says Adidas or whatever, the different trademarks. The drum makers like to kind of put their style on the drum to differentiate, oh, that's this guy's drum or that's the other guy's drum and, and, and so forth. So there's, this one came from a different drum maker than this one, so they both kind of look different, but they're both Sogos, okay? This uh, smaller version of that drum uh, this, these two actually come from the same family. Um, this is called a kiti, and often its part can be said, uh, can be said the actual the way that it's played. Kiti, kiti, kiti. So that's interesting. Okay, and then uh, there's a smaller drum that's a lot skinnier, and that's called a kaga. I didn't actually bring that with me today. Um, and then this right here. It's called an ahatse. Can everybody say ahatse? ahatse? Ahatse, yeah. So a lot of times here in the West, people just say, oh yeah, that's a shaker. Yes, it's a shaker, okay? But there's actually a specific name for it from, uh, from that region. And for this, for, for this region, it's actually called ahatse. There are larger ones that are called shakere and other ones that have many, many different names that pertain to the specific cultural music that they're played in. Um, so this one is called a hatse, and then we have this right here, which is called gankogui. Can everybody say gankogui? So we have gankogui, we have a hatse, we have kiri, and we have sogo. Now, the two drums that we left out are kagan, kagangu, and that's the, uh, the, the, the skinny drum that I was talking about that's kind of like about this big. And then there's also the lead drum that's called achimovu. Can everybody say achimovu? Achimovu. Yeah, now that drum is actually really tall. Uh, let's see, if I was, it comes up to about here on me and it leans over on a stand, you know, which it's got about this long and then the lead drummer plays on it with sticks and then stick in hand. Um, I've rarely seen a drummer just do hands. Usually it's at least one stick or two sticks. So, and that drum is really loud and really big and really heavy. So, yes. Okay, so who would actually like to come down and play some of the drums? Awesome. Just come on down if you want to play a drum. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different percussion instruments. No, doesn't matter, just have a seat. So this drum is not an A-way drum by any means. Make sure we get this on tape. This drum is not an A-way drum. This is a Remo drum from Valencia. It's a copy of a Thai drum. Yes. It's something, something that my wife uses for, for Filipino uh, kulintar. All right. So yeah, so this drum you're just gonna put it in between your legs like this and then just make sure it's leaning over because this kind of drum is actually similar to the conga where the way that the sound comes out is out the bottom, yeah. Okay, so this pattern is actually the same pattern that you guys are playing, but now you're going to do it with two different hands. We've got, hold on a second, okay. We've got the, uh, the first, first note is just going to be an open hand in the center, just like that, go ahead and hit it. Awesome, yes, letting it bounce off. You'll play that pattern as well. So letting it bounce off so that it can ring, go ahead. Awesome, okay, so that's all in the middle. And then the next hand is actually gonna hit on the edge. Now we wanna be careful not to be playing with this part of our hand hitting the drum, the bones right there, because it'll just hurt us later in the night. 
Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that we're just using this meat part that's in between the fingers and the hand to hit the side. So we're going exactly, exactly. So we're going to go like this. Yeah. So middle, back, middle, middle, back, middle, back, middle, middle, back, middle, back. Awesome. Okay, cool. So then your pattern is actually exactly what you were playing up here, except it's just going to be two open and then four close. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three. So the, the closed is the pressing, like we were doing up there, the pressing and then the open. It's just letting it bounce. You want to just try that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Awesome. Great. Cool. So uh, let's just try these two first before I get to your guys' patterns. They're <laughs> completely different than anything that was happening up here. Okay. So yeah, so it, it's going to be brand spanking new, okay? All right. So uh, let's go ahead and start you off first. One, two, three, and four. Okay, one, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, four. So you're gonna fit right in the pocket. Awesome, good, okay. All right, okay. <laughs> this is gonna be really hard. <laughs> no way. <laughs> okay. There you go, take it, no, you should try it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna hold it like this. There are two different ways that we can hold this drill. One is what I always do with the little kids. I'm like, hello? Okay, there you go. And then you can play it this way, like holding it like you're about to talk to somebody on the phone, okay? Or you could just hold it by the stem, Okay. like this. Okay, um, I tend to like this better, but either way, I've seen people do the both. You like that way? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. That works. All right, um, and then this you're actually gonna play, so you're gonna you're gonna be hitting it on your knee. So don't hit too hard, or else there'll be a big old red mark there later, and somebody will be like, "What happened?" You're like, I don't know. Right. Okay, so this pattern is going to go like this. Um, I want you to I want you to do it on here first okay. while I pay it on here. So uh, just listen to a couple rounds. <laughs> it's okay. Well I'm gonna break it down. Let's just go like this. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Just do the bottom first. Okay. Go. Okay, now we're gonna go. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now the next part is really weird. <laughs> so it's gonna be one, two, and then it's exactly what you just did, and then you're just gonna do three hits after that. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, that's, the, that's actually okay. the majority of the pattern, and then you just repeat that over and over again. Oh, you almost, okay. you just want to make sure you do I those know. three. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, <laughs> Here you go. This is hard. It's okay. It's hard. It's really hard. He's going to have to play it with you. He'll play yeah, it with you. Yeah, we should do it together. Okay, so this pattern, you're actually doing the same as her. You're going to do the same pattern as her, but you're going to start up here. So it's going to be up here. So it's that last part. I know it's that last part feels really funky because it's yeah. like, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna do the best we can. Can I just do here? Sure. If you want to do it all there. I find that going up here kind of makes it so that you know where the where the beginning of the cycle is because that's where the beginning is. If you look. Whereas if you just do it down here, you just have to remember 
where the beginning is. Okay? okay. All right. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. One, two, three, four. And, yeah, right there. Right there. Okay, okay, stop. <laughs> you totally had it. You totally had it, and then uh, you just stopped. Okay. Okay, so you just have to repeat it. Okay. Once you finish it, here we go. One. Two, three. Gun, It's okay. Copy him. Go ahead. Okay, keep going. Don't listen to what's happening over here. Okay, this is getting messed up. Check this out. Go. Go ahead. Oh, don't, too, don't go too fast. So this part's gonna go like this. There it is. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> okay, so. You can see, but it, it, it was a good shot. Definitely a good shot. <laughs> but you can see how complicated it is to play, yeah, to play all of the different parts as they relate to the bell. So uh, everybody give them a hand. Okay, so go have a seat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of your parts and show you how it relates to the bell with Dr. Sherman playing the bell. And then we can do another batch if you want. Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. So, this drum, this drum goes with the bell in this way. What, I'll, what I'd like for you to do is search for the most apparent part that this part has with the bell. Okay? All right, here we go. So where, where is the most apparent part that this part links up with that? Yes, that first set of double hits. Ging, gung, 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 right there. Can you play it? Coincidentally, if this, if the player that's playing this drum messes up, you know what they could do is they could always take a listen to the bell, and as long as they're locked into those first two double hits, then they're playing their pattern right. Cool. All right, so let me do this one really quick while we're here. So there's actually more to this pattern than what I was teaching you. It's not that I'm holding away from the goods or anything, but it gets, it, it really gets confusing when you add in a lot of the other stuff. So. Um, uh, go ahead. So this is the real pattern. So it's really this, and then we just add the hand. Yeah? 
Now the interesting thing with this part is as the different pieces go along, like as we, as we do different pieces that actually share this same bell, this actually begins to change. So there's three different ways um, in most of the pieces that we play, uh, uh, in many of the pieces, not all of them, in many of the pieces that we play, this pattern can play these three uh, different patterns with this bell. So the first one is the one I showed you. The second one is this. And then there's this. All right, cool. Awesome. And then this pattern, yeah, this time you got it. I keep getting lost. <laughs> And then this pattern, uh, this pattern also has several different parts to it as well. Uh, the most basic part is the part that you guys learn. And then it has variation. So there's like several different variations that you can do, and then you just go right back to the basic pattern when you want to rest. Okay? Does that make sense? That's crazy. Okay, so really quick though, as all of this stuff is happening at the same time, there's one, there's two more elements that we didn't add. There's this one. So if you could imagine this, I know it's very difficult to imagine. Okay, if you can imagine this, that small drum, the congon drum that I was telling you about that we don't quite have here today, this drum is going to be uh, playing this pattern while this is going on. drum will be playing that pattern and then the lead drum will be decorating on top of uh, on top of that the lead drum player is also uh, uh, leading the ensemble into multiple like different calls so we don't necessarily stay in this for the whole piece we change rhythms everybody changes rhythms depending on what the lead drummer plays so the lead drummer ends up playing some stuff like this Okay, cool. So all of those el elements, awesome. Is <laughs> all of those elements are going at play all in the same piece. And man, when this stuff is all playing together, it just makes you want to just, <laughs> just you just start wanting to dance. So it's it's really fun stuff. Okay, does anybody else want to have a round at the at the drums? <laughs> She had her eye on it. She was like, I'm going for that. I think uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll see if I can try and play uh, what it, some of the lead drum on top of, uh, uh, on top of this. OK. All right. So let's do it. Um, it's, uh, it's that same pattern you were doing up there, but you were doing it with one hand. It was one, two, one, two. And now you're just going to do it with two, so it'll feel a lot better. Okay? 
And then that one, that one is the same pattern as this one. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start up like this. And then for the rest of it, you play what she's playing on your, on your knee. When we go so, down to low and you go up to your hand. Yeah, so it goes one, 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 okay? You'll make it. It'll be just fine. Okay, I will make sure that I play everybody's part uh, before I go off and start doing something else. And I won't go off if, if it seems like it's falling apart, okay? I will make sure I stay with you. Okay. Um, here's, here's the thing, uh, the way that you guys can make sure that you're staying in your right spot is your first hit is, lines up with the bottom hit on the bell. So as long as you do your first hit when she plays the bottom, then you know you're good to rock. Okay? So let's start these guys first. Uh, one, two, three. Ga, 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 ga. Up, down, 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 up, down, 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 one, two, three. Da, da, one, two, three. One, da, da, one, two, three. There you go, right there. One, yes. It's right. Okay. So let's get you going. Good job. <laughs> I haven't had somebody pick it up that fast. Okay, that's good. Um, so that's a, a, a big taste of how, uh, how kind of uh, thick that this stuff can get with many people playing many different things all at the same time and uh, creating this kind of cacophony of rhythms. Yes. Do you guys have fun? Mm -hmm. Cool. Do you guys want to play more? <laughs> They're like, should we say yes? No. All right, cool. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Anybody else want to jump in, Russell? Who would like to play who is not going to? Okay. So did you guys kind of see how everybody else was working it? We're just going to go through it one more time. Uh, so the bell part. One, here we go, here we go, hold on. One, two, three. All right, so it's gonna, let's just take just the very beginning of it. Yeah. So when I go down to the low, it's your hand. That's when you come up. Everything else is on your leg. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. So just uh, just follow me for a second. We're just gonna do chunks of that so that you can get it easily. Just that. Just do that. One, dun, da, da. Excellent. Good. So now all you're going to do is just going to add three hits onto the last part of it. So it's going to go one, two, three. Six, right? Uh, it's seven. There's seven hits. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, you actually don't actually count. You just hear... You just hear where the cycle is, and then you just go. So I've, I actually had to count because I've never counted it before. So I was like, hmm. Yeah. So there's actually seven hits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two.
All right. So for you guys, uh, <coughs> um, your part. So it's a lot, lot slower. Slow, slow, slow. This part just uh, all hands. So middle, back, middle, middle, back, middle, back, middle, middle, back, middle, back, middle, middle, back, middle, back. Okay, cool. All right, let's uh, start with uh, the bell and the rattle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here you go. And one, two, three. So your part. So that one was a little rougher around the edges, <laughs> but uh, uh, but still the same thing still applies. Um, it's good for everybody to get the experience of of having to play like in an ensemble, in which um, unlike uh, a lot of Western bands like rock bands, uh, the lower part of the drums and the lower part of the the uh, the ensemble tends to be like the anchor, but only when it's playing this pattern. I mean, once it goes into that other stuff, it's like, man, you wouldn't really have a drummer do a whole kind of, all that kind of stuff, unless you were listening to metal, like Meshuggah or something like that. Um, and then that, in that case, maybe the drummer, the bass drum would be doing a whole bunch of crazier stuff. So it's a different experience, yeah? Awesome, cool. All right, guys. One, one last thing, the people who felt like they were the strongest down here, Come back. Let's see if we can get one. Let's see if we can get one really rolling. I think you would have to play. I think you would have to play the bells. I can do bell. Okay. okay. Somebody was re you. Your shaker was great. Yeah, her shaker was really good. So she should really come solid. down and finish that. It's not really solid. Yeah, sure. That's just because it used to happen to me when I first learned how to play this stuff. I was like, man, I don't know what's going on. I'd be like, and they'd be like, no. <laughs> oh. Because it's not, um, there are many different styles of West African drumming. And the most, uh, the most kind of well-known style, especially in the United States, has to do with djembe playing. Uh, has everybody seen like a djembe? I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure that you guys have seen a djembe at some point. And a lot of times people see djembe and they're like, oh yeah, that's that, what, that African drum, that African. It's like, no. Okay, that's from like one area of Africa and then the rest of the drums look completely different. And there's also different, uh, different structures of music. So with a lot of djembe playing, there are some cases where it's controlled playing, where you have to play specific rhythms at specific times. But then there's a lot of improvisation where you can just kind of play with whatever fits the rhythm at the moment. In this music, there actually isn't any room for improvisation. Everything that I play on this drum is actually specific rhythms, but they're ordered in a way that I choose. So, for example, if you hear me doing this, it will sound that way every time that I play it. Like it's not, I'm not just like making that stuff up. Like if there's a specific rhythm that I have to play to open this piece and that's the spot that it goes in. And then sometimes I can play pieces of it later, but I'm not just making up my own thing. Um, 
And that's kind of what this music is about. But a lot of times when people come in to study this particular type of music, they think that it's going to be uh, more, improv more improvisation based, like djembe playing, and then they end up offending the teacher because they just come in, they're just like, oh, yeah. Isn't that right? And they're like, no, man, it, was, it has nothing to, that's like going into the orchestra and just picking up a violin and just going, yeah, all right, man. Yeah. You're like, no, that's not how you, there's technique involved, you know? Okay. And it's all, and it's all oral transmission, it's not written down or something. No, yeah, you're not gonna get a piece of paper that says, okay, one, two, no. It's all about listening. You listen and you play it. Yeah, what we all wish our kids would do. Just listen. All right. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, um, okay, let's try it. You gotta start on four and six. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna count you off in six, because that's what your pattern, your pattern's in four and six, but it feels most comfortable in six. So right now we're going a little bit fast, so let's slow it down. This particular piece is a little bit more of like ging ga 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 ging ga 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 Yeah. So your part. Remember those two hits on there? Ga 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 Yes. All right. What I just played there is actually a part for you to transition into what he's playing. Uh -huh. So if you hear this, and then you transition into what he's playing, so it's ga 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 ga. So that pattern that they were playing, you're just gonna switch to that. <laughs> so I'm just giving you a hard time. Here you go. So he's gonna switch over to what you're playing when I play this. So play your pattern. Okay, cool, awesome. But just try and the, the notes that aren't the accented ones, just press, try and press. Yes, there we go. Awesome. 
so you're gonna start off with just this first. And then when you hear when you hear me do that roll, gaga, and then that's when you're gonna jump on that part. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right when I saw, oh my gosh. Okay, I, I just had, we have to hear how it sounds. So. Yeah. <laughs> just start with his pattern. Good. So then what happened there was I gave the call to come out of this pattern. And well, you didn't know it. It's okay. It's all good. Yeah. But anyway, that's a, that's like a crash course in, uh, in how to uh, kind of conceptualize what's going on here. These patterns can get really complicated. That wasn't complicated. Uh, was easy. Yeah, he, he this, said he, he was going to pick something really easy for us. Yeah. Uh, but these, these patterns can get really complicated uh, really fast. Um, and then they, uh, the, the, there's pieces that go extremely fast. And then there's also a, a, an interesting uh, thing that happens that when this music gets really quick, has anyone ever uh, gone to a, like an electronica concert or anything like that? Or a dance concert where there's a lot of dance music playing? And provided that nobody's actually on drugs, if you just, if you, if you actually just let, if you, if, most of the time the reason why people do substances is because they can't seem to relax and get into the music because of self-conscious purposes. They're self-conscious is about what people will think when they start to dance, uh, about what they look like and all this kind of stuff, and then so people do all these extra chemical things to, to kind of let that, that uh, self-conscious part get put to sleep. But... If, you, if you're really comfortable with yourself and you don't care about what people think when you dance, often just the music alone will just take you to that place. Um, and a lot of times you can see that happening in, uh, in uh, uh, cult drumming, which is religious drumming. I'm talking, when people say cult nowadays in the Western Hemisphere, it just seems like, oh my God, Jim Jones. Uh, but it's, it's not, you know... But it's not, when I say that term, it's not re in like reference to that kind of negativity. It's more of about uh, uh, religious ceremony type things. And a lot of the music that, that's played for religious ceremony type drumming uh, can get really complicated and really dense, but there's so many rhythms going on at once that your brain goes into a state of, of kind of euphoria. And then you can just kind of like, just with the music alone, just go to another place and then you just you start dancing i don't know what that is i don't know how that resonance can take uh human beings to that place and uh and 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 kind of push them into that atmosphere but uh nonetheless music has that power and uh especially when you go to dance concerts if you're able to do that if you're able to just kind of relax and not allow the self-conscious part of yourself to always be, you know, nagging at your leg to the point where you have to do something to get yourself out of it. If you just relax, often the music alone will just take you to that place. Anybody else have uh, questions for just about African music or, or anything in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
what would be like a really advanced like beat or technique in the drumming? Uh, in the drumming? <laughs> okay. Just making it work. Let me see. We'll see if Dr. Sherman can do this. Probably uh, not. Um, no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one uh, that goes to the, the bells. Yeah, so you, right? So the bell can end up going that fast, uh, but uh, let's let's just do uh, let's do. Uh, <laughs> Okay. 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 So can you do me a favor and just you're gonna just uh, shake your shaker like this. So don't speed up or else your fingers will just fall off. Need the win. That was a that was a that was actually an excerpt from a piece called Gotha, and uh, Gotha is actually played uh, to celebrate the the life of an elderly person uh, when they pass away. So it's kind of a an interesting way of uh, of uh, commemorating the the death the death or the passing of a person with such lively music, but uh, it's meant to focus on their life rather than uh, them. Their, their death. So. Did, did that make him, make anyone want to dance? <laughs> See, it does. I'm saying, man, you start going, you're just like, okay, get in there, yeah. <laughs> it does it to you, man. It can take you to that place. Well, Jack, thank you very much for yeah. coming <laughs> thank you. and showing us a playing day. All right. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Hey, good job. <laughs> you guys